Okay, so hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Grandmaster R. B. Ramesh from ProChess Training. And as usual, uh, every week we have been uh, analyzing the training games which we have given to our subscribers, ProChess Training. And the point of playing these training games is we select some interesting positions and give it to our audience. And uh, the subscribers, they play among each other every week, uh, two games. And uh, the point is to uh, expose them to creative positions, interesting positions in different aspects of the game. It could be in the opening stage, middle game, or interesting end game positions on different teams. And we want them to play among themselves with players of similar strength so that they'll gain some practical experience. And if they're not able to handle it well, they will also know the areas where they have to work and improve. So the position we see on the screen, this was given uh, in the last week. And it is, uh, we are actually given one move later. It is white to move in this position. And here, white has uh, an extra pawn and two bishops advantage, right? We have pair of bishop advantage, and we also have one extra pawn, seven versus six pawns. Even though these pawns are doubled, it is also controlling many of the important squares. So the knight is very restricted. Yeah. So <clears throat> now white has many advantages. One, as I mentioned, is the extra pawn. Two, the possibility of a very strong center if white can manage to advance the pawns to e5 then he will have a uh, very strong central pass pawns and apart from that we have two bishops and uh, this square on c4 is pretty weak any piece which goes there say a knight or a bishop any piece they will find a good outpost the queen is pretty passive because its diagonal is blocked by its own pawn it's in the corner of the board Rook is also stuck, right? So pretty much everything is going in white's favor. And in that instance, we will expect white to win the game, right? Without much of a problem. But what happened? Uh, this game ended in a draw. And white was Boris Gelfand, 2761 when it was played 11 years ago. Uh, and uh, Having such a good position, he could not convert it into a win. Let us see why. Now, in the game, castle was played. And we will see what happens after castle. But had white seen what could black could do after castle, he could have played the move d6. And the bishop is protecting the pawn. right? So it is very safe. And then you can always castle and then use the c4 square for the knight, and then bring the rooks to the central files. And white should win without much of a fight. But what happened? He played the natural move castle, and he thought, OK, next move I can play d6, or I also have the option of bishop c6, right? With the pawn protection, if you get bishop c6, it's a fantastic outpost. So thinking this, he played castle, but black has a very interesting tactic available at this point, which is 95. So it looks like a blender, but even though it is not completely equalizing for black, the psychological impact of such moves cannot be underestimated. So here, what is happening? Uh, White has lost his central pass pawn, which was already in fifth rank. And black suddenly gets three versus two pawn majority. And if he manages to push this, then suddenly he will get very good counter play. And here what happened psychologically, Gelfan was affected very much. And as you can see from the variations that follow, he made few mistakes and then uh, the game ended in a draw. Like I said, the position is not equalizing. And many times what happens when we are in trouble, like black was in this position, we should not lose hope even when you are playing against the good players. And we should always look for some tactical opportunities. The point is the knight on d2 is hanging. By playing castle, the king is not supporting the knight anymore, right? And when he takes, this two can come in a straight line. 
So this is the whole point. So, and if the rook manages to come to d2, okay, and the bishop is also attacking b2 pawn, so most likely he may lose the b2 pawn. So when you see this kind of uh, counter play from the opponent, it can up upset our balance. So Gelfan went for bishop c6, most obvious. Now it looks like he is losing at least an exchange, right? But let us see what can happen after queen d5. So queen d5, what he can do, he can play knight to f6, basically attacking this. And uh, so probably at this point, Gelfan rejected or stopped considering further what can happen here. So he thought whatever happens next to me is going to take rook into b2 and this pawn will fall and he gets active counterplay. But had he seen little deeper, for example, with this move, and now rook ac8, you can gain tempo and bring one more rook into the game. And he has to move here, rook into d2. So it looks like black is perfectly fine, isn't it? It is now uh, still white has an extra pawn because we took the c5 pawn, but it looks like the b2 pawn will be lost and then it will be equal pawns. But this bishop is very strong and uh, the two bishops, it still gives white an advantage. Now the correct approach for white is simply accept that we are going to lose the b2 pawn and capture the d file. So the d8 square, that is why the queen g5 is helping. And here you can take rook into d2, sorry, rook d1, rook d1, and b b2. And this also clears the second rank for the g sum square for the king. But white can go here. And here, if you take then the bishop can come in. Now we are threatening this type of mate and also a positional threat, which will be a pin and the knight will be lost. So he should not take on d8, but he can play king g7 direct. Again, it looks like black is surviving because as long as this bishop is here, checks along the diagonal will not be very dangerous. Okay, but you have to go a little deeper. You can take rook c8, knight c8 and queen d8. So we continue with the attack. Now the knight is under attack. The a5 pawn is also under pressure. So if you come knight e7, and here he has a fantastic move, which is queen c7. Now seeing this queen c7 ahead in the position where we castled knight d5, at this point, seeing the move queen c7 is not that easy. And now the queen and knight both are under attack. So queen cannot move, you lose the knight. So the queen exchange is forced and he loses the a5 pawn. And once he loses the a5 pawn, again, white will have an extra pawn. And this pawn is a pass pawn. And generally having a rook pass pawn is more dangerous to for the opponent. And the b pawn, it can easily be stopped by the bishop, even if it comes till b2 square. Okay. So to come to this point and assess it as better for white is not that easy. So Gelfand for castle knight d5, he rejected queen d5 and chose the option to play bishop c6. This is a much uh, safer continuation. But again, uh, he thought if he moves the rook, is getting bishop d5, that is a clear win. And if he moves the knight, let's say somewhere, you can just take on a8, right? and you have an extra exchange. Next move, you just block on c4. So this is what he thought, okay, I might have lost the d5 pawn, but I'm getting back the exchange. So when you are getting an exchange, why go queen d5 into that end game? But here, uh, Gashimo, unfortunately, he's not there anymore. Um, he played uh, c4, a fantastic resource. Again, you see, in difficult situations, the strong players, they keep finding some resource. Now, the queen is under attack. Now, the c4 pawn can be captured in two ways. You can capture with the queen or you can capture with the knight. If you capture with the queen, then you, you can attack the queen with the knight and uh, the rook also will be saved. Right? So you can simply play knight b6, queen attack. 
and if you move the queen protecting the b2 pawn he can just move the rook away and again he gets good counter attack now the bishop is under attack the point is if you do this again it looks like if we count the pawns white has an extra pawn right and the two bishops which are both doing pretty well and next move we are going to get rook c1 rook d1 and white seems to be fine but black has this brilliant move knight c3 now the d2 is hanging we are also threatening knight into b5 okay so if you take he takes now the pawn is spin okay cb4 bishop a1 and uh, black gets good counter play okay so in the game he did not take with the queen on c4 because he is getting knight b6 with tempo so he took with the knight this is also fine white is still better here but again you see black has already got activity so basically to clear the c5 square for the knight with tempo that is and uh, what happens is if you directly move the rook the knight is hanging okay so the rook is not protecting because the knight is blocking so he first moves the knight and then he plays rook here the bishop attack okay so here the game he took bishop d5 rook d5 white still has an extra pawn but now this is a pin and more importantly if you see let me go back look at the black pieces right not very active the bishop is also not active right but suddenly when we come to this position now the bishop diagonal is open right and look at the rooks they have occupied open files and sometimes b3 can come okay and uh, the queen and knight will be under trouble so white is still better because of the extra pawn he played here and rook d1 rook d1 rook d1 queen a6 so he's getting good counter play on the light squares okay so he played here idea rook check 96 so here black has created some kind of a barrier okay and uh, he managed to make a draw in this position despite being a pawn down suddenly black pieces are well placed the bishop is in open diagonal the knight is very safe and secure and also prevents the entry on d8 square the rook is in open file the pawn on b2 is weak okay so using this he obtained some serious counter play and managed to escape with a draw now let us go so the main point of this position is in a difficult situation how we create counter play without losing hope okay so now let's go to the next training position we are given okay so this was the one minute let me go one more back okay so this was the position now black just played bishop h3 and uh, this was a position we had uh, given for our subscribers and uh, i hope many of you got the right solution let me see if white plays accurately he can get an advantage and how he has to play accurately that is the whole point now a correct move is knight c5 which is fine it was also played in the game this was a game played between tony miles versus uh, ian timon from netherlands tony miles of course is from uk he's no more like gashimo from the previous example okay so now the queen is under attack b7 pawn under attack and the queen is supporting the bishop also because so the queen cannot save both the bishop and b7 pawn so this is forced now you have to be accurate so we have two options one is the natural move bc5 which looks very tempting but 
it allows bishop g2 intermediate move attacking the rook bring it to g2 and now they will play knight d5 and then this b7 pawn when queen b3 ideas come you can always protect it okay so now if you come here idea e4 i can just move and you are not able to take because queen trap okay so this is the problem if you directly take pawn into c5 so what miles did he cleverly took on h3 now the queen is attacked so queen h3 is forced and now he took on c5 okay now this is what he should have played but again he had a choice one he can directly take c5 or first give queen b3 check king h8 and then c5 take on c5 okay so the two choices are you directly take pawn into c5 or you play queen b3 check king h8 and then take on c5 so here miles thought for some time and went for this queen b3 continuation now let us see what happens after this and black has to move the king for the check and you capture so the whole point is now you cannot play knight d5 because the queen is controlling the square so knight d7 is forced okay and uh, now the problem is if you take this okay black has a very nice continuation which is d6 now the threat is rook a7 and the queen is trapped So this is the problem. Now, the point is, the white queen cannot come back to any square. Okay, the queen is controlling the b3 square. So if you try to do this, now the point is, you want to come queen d6 and escape. So probably this is what Miles saw and rejected this line, but you can continue further. Okay, now the queen is again in trouble. So now one threat is, now let's say I'm just making a dummy move. You can come here, and only square, and this. Cannot save both. Okay, so a beautiful variation. But, so for this reason, he is not able to take on b7. So at this point he realized, after queen b7, queen e6, the queen is getting in trouble. So what he did, he played d4 first, which is a very interesting try. Now the point is, if he takes e d4, now you can take this. Okay, and if you go queen e6, we can also take this, the square, and here you have this also. Okay, and we'll have an extra pawn, knight d4 bd4 it will be an extra pawn or uh, there should be other ways also like you can get rook c1 after knight c5 so <clears throat> this was the point he played d4 but black played very well he simply defended this pawn and now look on e5 and here White made black made a mistake. He took with the knight, but then after knight to e5, f5, rook k d1, white's position is clearly better. The pawn is weak. The f2 pawn is now defended by the rook, so no problem here. So b7 is weak, e5 is weak. Okay, and then you can go next rook d5, and then uh, you exploit the weak pawns in black position, and white won the game. So what he should have done is he should have kept this knight alive, okay, and played f e five. What is the point? Now this is also a threat, but instead of playing defensive chess, you should go for activity because the after taking queen c four, then the e five pawn will fall. The knight will be under attack, okay. But here black has knight f six. Good move. The point is if you capture this pawn, he has knight g4, threatening queen h2 mate, and this, you cannot stop the mate. Okay, so with knight of six move, 
he is managing to indirectly defend this pawn and now he is going to come knight g4 followed by rook and f3 and h2 mate so the only move for white is to go knight g5 it's not possible because the queen is hanging so we attack the knight and then knight a6 attacking the pawn and the rook and here we go rook f7 and this position is unclear black has very good counter play okay so this is what he should have done and white could not have got any advantage so where did white go wrong it was giving this check which was a mistake so he should change the move order and then he could have got a very good position so from this example we can learn the importance of move order in calculation so miles tried to be a little bit too clever and he played queen b3 but the correct move order is on takes okay and <clears throat> now if you come knight d5 and all i can play like queen c4 queen e6 you know, like e4 pieces lost okay and why i put the queen on c4 is why not queen b3 because here you have this extra option the queen is hanging right if i take gf4 my queen will be hanging but in this case if you play knight f4 i can just uh, capture now you are not able to give check because of pin okay so he has to go knight d7 like in the game and now we are already seen if you play queen b3 it is just transposing this this we have seen this already right and here black is fine so what you should do you should change the move order again first play d4 now the point is he cannot play e4 you can just take queen d4 so for d4 we are also threatening d5 now okay so if he takes e d4 now we go queen b3 check king h8 and queen takes b7 knight attack now knight e5 knight to e5 knight attack forcing knight to e5 and you take bd4 and now the queen is not trapped because the queen has many squares to move around right and white has an extra pawn and uh, no direct attack the point is if you come knight g4 we have uh, queen g2 coming on time and defending the h2 okay so by playing knight c5 initially bishop c5 this move order and now this followed by knight d7 we have to see and now this d4 in this specific move order white could have got a very good advantage and probably went out to win the game so this is what i wanted to show these two training positions interesting positions where in the first example the move order uh, was important he could have played d6 and then castled but he castled allowing knight to d5 and it gave a lot of counterplay for black and gashimo managed to draw against uh, boris kelfand and in this game again uh, this specific move order you have to play b c5 and d4 first and then only queen b3 check queen b7 but in the game he played queen b3 check and then d4 the whole thing did not give any advantage for white okay so i hope the positions were interesting and you can play through this analysis little slowly later on a chess board and if you see we have uh, sharing some information about master classes wesley so a top 10 grandmaster in the world he is going to do a master class for uh, pro chess training subscribers so for those of you who want to attend wesley so's uh, seminar i strongly recommend you to enroll and we are also having a, a few sessions by myself grandmaster uh, suresh ekar ganguly you can see the date and timing of this uh, seminars and master classes and we are also having some good discounts for those of you who enroll to these camps to join our coaches training academy we have over 30 grandmasters who are teaching in our platform and uh, every month we are adding one or two new grandmasters so that uh, uh, our players are exposed to information from different top coaches and players 
and the, the month of July, we'll be having uh, Grandmaster Mihail Marin, who will be joining Project Training Platform, and he'll be doing a session for our subscribers. So we have uh, five groups, starting from uh, undated players until uh, the fifth group, which is exclusively for players about 2400 rating. We have around the seven grandmasters who are uh, part of uh, as students in this uh, 2400 plus group, including uh, Grandmaster Pragnananda and the uh, younger sensation Abhimanyu, Mishra, Christopher Yu, Narodetsky, and so on. So if you are interested, please visit our website www.prochestraining.com for more information. Okay, so with this, I will end today's analysis session. Stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye.